Welcome back to the series. Uh, in the last few videos, we covered the WP API basics. And on this one, we're going to cover the CRUD, the create, read, update, and delete using WP API and WordPress REST. And let's go to the code. All right. So what you saw there consists of two pages. One is WP API CRUD page which is responsible for the the layout and the headlines and in here we are calling in this component which actually going to be doing the job and as you can see it is inside a pre tag and you'll know why very soon so let's go check out what is uh, wp api crud is doing so this is our main man in here i'm just uh, main thing i'm calling here is the wp api which I am instantiating here with the password. Now, previously what you saw, uh, even though I was using these, but then they would still work without this. For example, let's say if I just get rid of these guys, right? Save it and let's perform the read operation. We're just gonna go ahead and read the posts. And also at the bottom, you can see it is in a try catch block. So any error will be caught by this catch block and the return kept very simple. We just have a loading spinner and the output, I am just putting the raw form using the JSON stringify. And in here, I'm just doing a little bit of messaging, error messaging that comes straight from the REST API you will see why this is and how this takes effect very soon. And this post variable is coming all the way from here using the use state. And what we're doing is we're gonna be running these functions using use effect. And once the result comes in, I'm gonna be using set post to full, you know, fill up this variable. Otherwise, if there is an error, set post will be used to show the error message right so for now let's go see what happens since i'm doing this on a wordpress template i always have to do this empty cache and hard reload sometimes you know a couple of times once it didn't it doesn't work so let's see what we get all right so this is what the output is. It's gonna actually show all these uh, 10 posts that it collected. And what I wanted to show here is that it is working without the passwords. But what we are about to do, the CRUD operation, the insert, update, and delete is not gonna happen without these, right? So let's re-enable them, save it. And also let me go to the back end. Okay, in here, I'm just going to show where this password is coming from. So let's go to the users. So now we have three users here. I'm going to pick this administrator, CG team. And if I go in there, in here, you see this application password option. And in here, I've created all the passwords before. Here, let's say, just sh to show you an example, YouTube, if I hit it, and it's going to give me a password like this, and it's going to show up only one time, right? So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this, copy it, and go back, and I'm going to update this password just to show that how it actually functions. Get rid of that, paste the new one, save it, and I'm gonna go ahead and rerun this same operation. Boom, it works. So that means this password is in action, and if I hit a profile update here, it's gonna go away forever. We can never see that password again. So. Once you create this password, it's your responsibility to save it or put it in a safe place where you can use it and reuse it in your application. And anytime you don't want, you can just revoke them using these and they disappear, okay? So that being said, this is the data we're gonna be working with. Now let's go back to the code and get started. All right, we are back at the code and we don't need this anymore. So. 
What we're going to do this time, we're going to go ahead and make it a little bit larger so that we can see properly and disable this block because we have already seen how it works and enable this block where we're going to be creating a new post, right? And we have categories, we're you know, hard coding it and we, are, we have tags that we are hard coding it even we have an ACF entry uh, that right here and in the end we are you know publishing the status now before we run this let's go to the WordPress backend and see the situation okay so these are our posts and if we go inside one we see that besides the regular stuff we also have a block called contact info and a whole bunch of information here coming from ACF and to find that out let's go to the custom field okay this custom field as we mentioned before the contact info so if we click here now we see all these entries are enabled so what we did we just picked out one so that we can show that it actually works before the acf version 5.11 which you can see here see this is the important version number and also remember this is happening in advanced custom field pro version i haven't tested with the regular version so please feel free to do it but what i'm trying to say is before this version acf wasn't integrated by default with wordpress we would have to use the third-party plugins to make that happen now after this version 5.11 what's happening is that they gave us this one extra item here under the settings show in rest api so once you turn that yes the acf automatically shows up in the rest api like this see right here it comes in just like a simple block and when you provide all the arguments you can just simply say this and call in that specific field ID and put in any value you want and it automatically inserts it and that's what we are about to see besides that we have categories and I have category here the first two I picked uh, the ID 30 and 157 as you can see here 157 and 30 which are a app dev and a app set timeout and also created two tags here IDs are 375 and 374 that's what I'm entering right here right that being said we are ready to go now let's go here and do a refresh all right look at that we have a brand new post ID 1466 and we, with our content with our tags categories and title just to verify it just come here and click on posts and right here we have our 1466 and we can see the tags here the categories and if we go in our content and right here the ACF also in here now that being said let's go back to the code okay so now that we know we can create a post using WP API so now let's disable this and try to update something right it's a similar structure but this time with WP and also please remember they're always awaited because this is an async functionality right so always uh, in here we're calling a function fetch post which has the async and then whenever we're calling WP API we have to await it so that the code waits for this result to come back right and in here we're doing the regular dot post but this time we are using a ID filter dot ID and we're providing a 1433 as an ID and dot update inside that we have our arguments now let's go see what 1433 holds right now okay so right here this is 1433 
and as you can see it has uh, categories data and easy no tags and if we go in we have this as a title this as a content and please update me and that's the contact info which is coming from ACF right let's go back and this is the code we'll be running let's save it now let's go run it right click refresh all right so we ran our update on 1433 and look it now changes all the data we gave to verify let's go look at this one kk cg team this 1433 let's do a refresh there's no kk anymore and we have our categories tags and if we go inside we have our new content and brand new acf we just updated all right so now let's go to the next item let's target the delete and we're gonna target this id 1433 all right so we're back at the code and we're going to disable this guy and delete is pretty simple right here and let's change the id to 1433 save it and look at the code it's very simple it dot post with the id filter and dot delete simple as that now let's go run it let's come here refresh all right so let's look into here 1433 and if we look at the status it is now trashed right so in here let's go 1433 and then refresh and look one is in the trash we go in 1433 so we have just successfully created updated and deleted wordpress post using wp api and react just one small thing i wanted to show before i finish this video is that now that we already have deleted this so if we rerun it you will see that wp rest api gives actually certain error messages that we can take that and display it when necessary what i'm trying to mean is that we don't have to create extra validations if we can utilize wp rest api's own message so what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and try to rerun it and show you what happens boom there you go so when you rerun it this is the message gets sent from rest api so from here we can actually create you know collect this dot message and display it right here and that's what's happening right here we are since everything is inside a try catch block instead of post we are we're setting the post value as the error and from that error we're using post dot message which is collecting this message right here and printing it right here with some bootstrap classes like this and with that we end this video if you like it please smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please smash the like button and the subscribe button. This will help me bring more free contents like this to you every week. Thanks again.